Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues this time. We head out to Fresno, California. Good news out there. Joining us in the Nike hot seat today is their new head coach, Troy Steiner, who after the last 10 seasons at Oregon State is ready for the challenge. And what a challenge it is. Troy, welcome back to the show. How are you? I'm doing great, Scott. I'm doing great. It was last Thursday at 1 o'clock Pacific when you and your family were introduced to uh, the Bulldogs and the Bulldog media for Fresno State. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, honored, uh, you know, that they put the trust in me to get this thing back up and, and going, and um, I'm excited. In I'm what excited. Some, some would believe to be a bit of a dry spell as far as the growth of wrestling at the Division I level. We're seeing growth at almost every, well, at every other level, including women's. But now Fresno State is the one to herald the return of a positive number to the roles of D1. That's exciting, isn't it? It is. It's very exciting. And it's, a, it's an important position, an important job because, uh, because of that. You know, if, I feel if I get this thing set up and then and, and get it going and in the right direction or you know just get it set up right and get get this program going you know it it could possibly open up other doors you know from other institutions to do the same the university i'm talking about fresno state cast its net uh fully across the united states looking at all candidates and and it really truly boiled down to you uh, how did the how did the process start anyway with you, and when did it start as far as uh, exploring Fresno State and them taking a good look at you? When did it start? Well, at uh, I'd say at NCA's, uh, John Krebs came up to me and asked, you know, or just said, you know, we're gonna we're starting this program back up, and uh, we're gonna be opening it up, and just ask if I was interested, and I said, you know, I. I haven't given them much thought, but you know, I do. I definitely listen. I know that Jim Bartko has uh, been very uh, diligent in making sure this is done and done right. Not a short-term hire, not a short-term addition. This is long-term for Fresno State. What was it that he said that uh, made you commit to this idea and to the job? Well, I think it was a, you know just a combination of a lot of things. You know, I, a lot of things. But number one, I mean. With uh, you know, President Dr. Castro, you know, having him as the driving force behind this thing, it makes you feel good. You know, I mean, when you got the president of the university as the driving force to bring it back, you know, and then you have the administration that are they know, they know that it's got to be done right, or it, it's you know, or else it's it's not going they're not going to get a second chance here to to get it. To get it back again, you know, so they know they need to do it right, and uh, um, and then the community and the this valley, you know, with it's so rich in wrestling, and and uh, you know the support here is uh, has been a bit overwhelming, which is it's it's nice, nice to have. Central Valley is the valley which you're speaking of, and you're right, it is a hotbed, Coach. We have uh, high school teams around there that. Uh, uh, just absolutely produced some incredible athletes, great wrestlers, and outstanding student athletes as well. Uh, you, they've given you a bit of a timeline as far as how to and when things need to be done. Let's first talk about the hiring of assistant coaches. Uh, that has to be first and foremost in your mind because upon that staff, that's what you're going to be leaning. What's the timeline as far as hiring assistant coaches? Well, I can I can hire or they can start here. July one, but we I'm going through right today actually of getting everything set up, getting the job description set, or where they so they can open this position up, and um, and then we'll you know we'll look to see who applies and all that, and then you know I've got some people in mind that I'll I'll ask to apply and and we'll take it from there. You know, we'll have phone interviews and bring them on campus, and but I, you know it can be done fairly quick. Um, I'd like to have someone here, or at least on board, you know, by the end of June, middle to the end of June, uh, early July. Recruiting of athletes, i got to believe that begins literally right away. You're going to be talking the talk about Fresno State. Uh, and are you going to be focusing initially anyway and primarily on the Valley and all the schools that feed? Sure. I mean, I think it's got to be the Valley first and then, you know, the state of California. 
and then you know then we'll go where we need to you know but there's a lot of kids here in the state there's a lot of kids on this west corridor that uh, you know in Oregon Washington and and a lot of these schools out west where kids need a place to go you know there's not a ton of programs so you know we'll go where we need to but I think we need to start right here in the valley you know, last, last time I was out there was for the All-Star Classic that was held in the, it was downtown, but I will tell you this, the mat that we used is the old Fresno State Bulldog mat, and last I recall, it was pretty pretty hard. It was hard like a rock, actually. Is there plans for a brand new wrestling mat? There is. There's, uh, there's, they're going to redo the, you know, there's still a room that they had. They're going to expand it a little bit and uh, redo everything in there. Uh, they're putting locker rooms in, new offices. I mean, everything is going to be done. They said everything will be done by next June. Next June. And literally, uh, winter 2017-2018 is when you are scheduled to begin active competition. Coach, what conference will you be competing in? Um, unsure right now. You know, I'm, we're looking at the the options. The options right now look to be Big 12 and then possibly Pac-12, but um, we just got to wait to see, you know, what the the options are, and then we'll really look at that and we'll see what's best for the program and what's best for the sport. Tell so. you how dedicated they were to Dennis Toledo. It's taken all this time to find his replacement. Yeah, like I said in the interview, you know, the, the fight and perseverance that guy's had to stay on this and stay on these these people here at Fresno State to get this back. You know, I, I said we're going to need the same fight and determination and drive in the athletes. And when we, when we get into competition, you know, it's he's a he's a heck of a resource to have here. He's all wrestling. I mean, I don't know how many phone calls I've already had from him, but I I'm just going to start giving him tasks to do, and he'll be a he'll be like an assistant coach for me. Gosh, you couldn't ask for a better guy, Bulldog through and through. We're talking with the new head coach of the Fresno State Bulldogs. We're talking to Troy Steiner, a uh, decorated athletic career that uh, he brings with him. Uh, he's coached 22 All-Americans, 10 Big Ten champs, 7 Pac-12 championship teams, 6 NCAA Division I champions, along with uh, Junior Fila, world freestyle champ as well. Now let's talk a bit about leaving Oregon State. You made your home there. Your family was comfortable there. How did that conversation go with your wife? Um, you know, she was she was really one that wanted me to to put my name in the hat, you know, and she said, "Yeah, I think you have to look at it and look at the situation, you know." And she has a, she had a great job up there. She's still working there right now for another month, but she was really for it. Um, and you know, without without her really wanting to do it and and behind it, I, there's no way I probably would have even took it any further than that. Um, you know, she's been great with it, but that, that was by far the hardest, hardest thing is to, to leave Corvallis. You know, there's been, it, it's been a great 10 years of our life for our, for our family and our kids and, and for our development, you know, as, as in our careers, it's been, it's been great. We've met so many wonderful people up there that uh, that's that's by far the hardest part of this whole transition. We're talking with Troy Steiner. You and your, your wife share two great kids and Spencer and Abigail, and perhaps there is no perfect time to, to take a job that is going to demand so much time. But I think with the support of your wife and, and the, the interest that your kids have in the sport as well, that perhaps makes it a little bit easier. For you to take the job, agree yeah, or disagree? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, they're they were they're excited for it, and uh, they they were down here this past week weekend, and you know we looked we drove definitely around the community, and they're really excited for it, and uh, you know they they probably adjust quicker than we do, mm -hmm. to tell you the truth. I mean, they're pretty resilient. They jump in. They make they're both very social. They can make. They make new friends pretty easily, and so it's uh, it, it's 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 good. It's a good time. I wouldn't want to wanted to wait any longer for sure. That's for sure. And you know, with being this year where I don't have a team, it's going to be nice to kind of 
kind of reconnect in a, in a way with them and maybe spend a little more time helping them and helping them develop, you know, where I was before with 30 other kids. You know, uh, I don't know where your brother was. I think it was Ulaanbaatar, uh, Mongolia. But where do you know where your brother was when you called and told him? I'm talking about Coach Terry Steiner. Yeah, I was in, or he was in Istanbul. Istanbul, okay. Yeah. And uh, what was his initial uh, response? Yeah, well, he he's he's really excited for it. He's uh, pumped up. He's uh, he's he's really excited that I taken the position. He he sees the same opportunity here that I do. You know what this thing, place could become, what this program could become. You know if if it's done right and. Uh, so he's going to be a big help as well. I mean, he's he knows everyone in the wrestling world, you know, from his contacts, and you know, he'll help me any way he can. For sure. Future looks bright for Fresno State and the Bulldogs now. Coach, what are the numbers they're shooting for? How many student athletes uh, will make up the initial roster? And that's a guess, I would imagine. But what's your cap? Yeah, the, the first year it's going to be at twenty-two. And then from there, it's going to go up. And they, I said by year three, I want to have 32. And they, they said that I would, I would have that. Nice. So, okay. so yeah. So it's it's fine. I mean, I, it gives me a little time to really get the kids that I want, and and um, and then just build the relationships with them before we start bringing in new guys. So, um, it, it, I, I don't mind it. You know, it's going to be a, you know, it's going to be a struggle a little bit, but. We'll, we'll we'll make it work. Well, nothing. You know, let's, let's face it. You and your brother struggled in your early years, but that pair, that duo that you guys were, you figured out a way to make it work. You ended up at the University of Iowa as an athlete. Uh, from there, you you hit the coaching trail just a little bit, but uh, you came up on a cat named Jim Zaleski, the Beavers' head coach, up at Oregon State. Now, let me ask you this: um, having as close a relationship as the two of you had. Did you initially start with the interview process and the conversation, and he had the knowledge that uh, this was going on? Yeah, he knew right away. I mean, when when John Krebs came up to me at the NCAs, he was standing right beside me. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> That's a good so, indicator. <laughs> so he knew it right away, and you know, he knew it, that I was, you know, that I at some point would like to get into my own program, but you know, he also offered a very good position for me there so um, when, when it came down to it and you know I really went in and talked to him about it and you know asked him what he thought of the what the, of this position and you know and he didn't really know many details then we you know I shared him the, some of the details about the program and, and he just said I said it looks like good you know they're really stepping up and supporting you and Jim's never going to be a guy to try to hold you back you know he's he knows that um, he kn he knows knew I was ready for this and and um, and you know he said I don't want to lose you but at the same time I I know you can really make an impact there and and help the sport and and um, you know and I'm sure I'll be calling Jim a, a, quite a few times to ask him what the heck I'm doing and. And I'm sure he'll call me a few times to ask what the heck I was doing there with some of the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where are the pencils? <laughs> I cannot find the pencils. <laughs> Top left-hand drawer, clear at the back. Um, Troy Steiner is her guest, a friend of ours for many years. Um, I, I, I remember uh, you know, watching the advanced school of wrestling come to fruition in Madison, Wisconsin. I remember uh, the first time I saw you wrestle as a Hawkeye. And uh, according to Royce Alger, you are much younger than Royce. Um, <laughs> he also said you're a much, or that he was a much better wrestler than you. Is there any truth to that? <laughs> well, we each got our own opinion, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, now Royce is a guy, he was, he was great to have a part of the, you know, he was graduated already, but he was always great to have around the program because he kept things light and and then uh, you know he pushed your buttons a little bit to keep you going too. So, you know, I, I mean, it was it was always fun to have Royce around. Serious part of Royce is that he knows how to wrestle and knows how to win. 
Yeah. I mean, a guy can, he, he's a tremendous athlete, but boy, has he turned out to be a great coach. Just yeah, great. no, he's, he's, you know, he's one of those guys that, uh, he's a competitor, you know, and I don't care what, um, and what situation it is that you'd want him on your side because he's, he's a fighter and he's going to find a way to get it done. And if he, if he's, it doesn't get it done, the other guy's going to know that he was in a battle. Yeah. Coach, I, I gotta believe that you and your brother have had this conversation. What does the future look like as far as women's wrestling at Fresno state? Is that a possibility? Well, I don't know. You know, I'm not going to say it's not, um, right now, you know, we'll get this program up and going and, We'll see where it goes. You know, I ask them that in the uh, in the interview if they've ever thought of that because of the, you know, if, if there is a Title IX issue, you know, and they said they haven't really thought about it, you know. But I, I did ask them about it in the interview. I don't think it's in in the near future, but you know, down the road it could be. Well, I tell you what, Troy. It's uh, with our congratulations. You are firmly in the spot. The work truly begins now. And I know that uh, uh, Oregon State has had to see you go, but there is a whole Red Wave community there to give you their support and uh, show up when it's time to see the wrestling uh, first whistle blow at the first match. Is there anybody you want to thank publicly while we give you the opportunity to do so? Um, you know, we all have friends and mentors along the way, but uh, for fear of, of leaving somebody out, I understand. But at the same time, are there those that you would like to thank? Well, first of all, I want to just thank my family, you know, for for always being there and for the support. Not not just my wife and kids. It's my my siblings, my my mother, uh, my extended family. You know, they've always been there for support. You know, and uh, and been there for us. And uh, and then just all the coaches that I've had. You know, and and the people that I've met through the sport. I, I you know, like the last ten years has been an amazing amazing place to be in Corvallis and for the family and that I can't express enough how much that place means to me you know and, and the team up there that you know a group of guys that they put their faith in you and, and they worked and they bought into the vision and so it's just you know there's so many people to thank I don't everyone that's been in, in touch with me you know they've had a piece of it so um, I look. I helped. Look to help them as much as I can, and and as I come down here, it's a whole new community that I want to get to know and and build the relationships like I had up in Corvallis. You want to wrestle for them, man? I tell you what. Get on the Fresno State website. Uh, it'll give you instructions on how to apply. It'll give you instructions on how to be in touch with Coach Steiner. Uh, from Bismarck Century High School, we start there, and then we literally travel around the world as an athlete, as a coach, and now as a head coach. You land at Fresno State in the Valley, and I'll tell you what, they couldn't have picked a better one. Troy, thanks for the time today. Congratulations to Fresno State on an incredible hire. Jimmy Bartko's got himself a good one. i got to tell you that right now. Appreciate the time. Thanks for being in the Nike hot seat. You bet, Scott. Thanks you, and thank you. Thanks for what you do for this sport.